today on IODP Expedition 342, Newfoundland. Awesome, it's coral from an ancient atoll. Can you see? We've just recovered a very small piece of the core catcher and interestingly of Cretaceous age, which you can see from this chart is, which shows our drilling objectives, which is, oh, um, well, I guess we're gonna have to, come with me, we're gonna have to go uh, this way. So I think uh, we're, we're slightly off the chart, but if we go downstairs, we might be able to make it into the uh, lower Cretaceous. It should be somewhere should be, yeah, it's probably right above this acoustic tile. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere, yeah, you can just see Albion up in there. So yeah, that's, uh, that's where we are. The first objective of biostratigraphy is determining the age of the sediment. Because the life, whatever life, or animals, or plant, flower, whatever, they are evolve. So they have an evolutional history and uh, their morphology is changing time to time. So when we analyze their morphology, we can identify the age of the sediment. We're out looking for uh, this species here, which is called uh, Gwembelichuridis nutelli, which uh, its first appearance in the geological record marks the early to Middle Eocene boundary, which is the uh, onset of global cooling out of the uh, early Eocene greenhouse to uh, provide time control for the uh, sediments that we're recovering. Chocolate ice cream. It's a forum's hand. A lot of forum, everything forum we like that. Well, you know, it's scratchy, it's got lots of big forearms in. Hiroshi knows already it's Pleistocene. It's a Pleistocene. He's a biostrographic ninja. If you look at the microfossils, it's quite abundant within sediment. Phytoplankton, nanofossils, and planktic forearm, benthic forearm, and the radiolarians have a uh, silicious test. So we need to use some organisms which have hard part. So we can identify those fossils and find fossils almost wherever in the ocean. So that is a quite a big advantage for those four groups of microfossils. Planktic forum is very important for climate event. Here it is. It's like that. You see? So if we look at climate system in the past hothouse or greenhouse, then we can predict what happens in the future. We know that we are releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. We know that carbon dioxide is a powerful greenhouse gas. We, we can measure the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere today. And we can measure the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in the past. So the trillion dollar question is what is climate sensitivity? What we mean by climate sensitivity is for a given CO2 forcing, how much will global temperatures respond? And that is the trillion dollar question that we are seeking to address with our expedition. Another drop stone at the top of the core. I've been seeing these the whole time. Is that... oh, this is different. Use a scientific tool. Oh my goodness. Wow. What's that? I have no idea. Well, let's see, have a look. 
Whoa, look at that. I think we're rich. I'll be damned. I do believe that we have no funding problems anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a Rose's Diamond, I believe. Uh, right out of the top of our core and right next to the very drop stone that probably did in the Titanic. I'm very excited. I think this is your diamond. It's the real deal, Amit. We really struck it rich this time. Uh, no, it looks certainly like a real diamond to me. Let me try. Hey, Dick, I got James Cameron on the phone. He wants his fake prop back. Oh, Hollywood. Ah, oh, it's real. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, we just spent $100,000 to get this thing off the bottom of the ocean. So it's become a piece of science. Uh, I'm sorry, you can't have it back. It was a really crazy day. Just as I got off shift last night, we were in the middle ear scene, and then we went into the lower ear scene, that white ice cream looking stuff. We jumped across the Paleocene ear scene boundary. This is the Paleocene, maybe the PTM, probably not. Then we went through the Paleocene, jumped across the Paleocene into the Cretaceous, through the Cretaceous, and now we're at the Cenomanian Tronian boundary, which is this amazing uh, oceanic anoxic event. Uh, which we're all really excited about. This is time machine on warp speed then. We're back in the Cretaceous. That must be 40 million years we've gone through in 24 hours. Pretty amazing. We didn't really expect it. We didn't think we would drill back into that, that, that past, uh, that far into the past. So that is a surprise. These are extreme events in the carbon cycle often associated with warming and stagnation of the ocean so that you end up with these uh, accumulations of carbon. It's a brilliant way for the Earth's system to get rid of excess CO2 in the atmosphere by burying carbon as organic matter in the ocean floor. These events that are anoxic um, events that preserve organic matter, and in some cases this organic matter can accumulate and under the right conditions and right temperature and burial, uh, can be the source of oil and natural gas. This carbon was stored naturally by the Earth's system. So in a way, you know, what we've been doing the last couple hundred years is tapping into this natural storage and re-releasing it into the atmosphere. You know, that's why we're interested in studying these kinds of things, because it helps us understand sort of both natural sequestration processes and how we've sort of influenced that. The Earth system will handle this this uh, CO2 that we're putting into the system. The question is whether our civilization will be able to handle it or not. Hey you guys, I'm so glad you were here for Expedition 342 on board the Joides Resolution. You helped us learn so much about the Eocene, a time when it was much warmer than it is today. But you know what? Maybe you'll be able to tell your cousins the whales, the horses, and the modern day primates all about the Eocene because today the Earth is actually getting a lot warmer. And we think that in about a hundred years it's actually going to be very similar to the Eocene. So everybody better get prepared. Now, I'm really happy you're here, even though you tried to escape in the lifeboat and you are stealing things in the lab. Wait a minute, where did Charlie Darwinius go? Oh, not again. All right, today uh, we're going to bring you a, a 30 uh, foot long core, this is 9 meters long, uh, that we recovered all in one shot off the bottom of the ocean. This represents about 400,000 years of Earth history, and you can see that it consists of varying colors of clay. We have green or gray clay, and white clay, and green or gray clay, white, you know, dark colored, light colored sediment. And you can think of this as being a product of very small variations in Earth's climate that are changed by how much sunlight uh, the Earth absorbs, courtesy of changes in the greenhouse gas concentration in the atmosphere. And I think about it as being a little bit like playing with a TV remote, where if you push the button, you go from like the classical station, uh, or if you push the button the other way, you go to MTV. So we go from, you know, the classical to the MTV, the classical, the MTV, and so forth, on through this kind of climate cycle. And the main point here is that the system is very sensitive. You can see it oscillates very 
uh, regularly, you know, from one of these stations to the next, very much like what you'd get by just pushing very lightly on this little TV remote. So if we keep on going down the thing, you can see the regular oscillations of the climate cycle running through the whole thing. Um, and now I look back at 400,000 years of Earth history right there, just one light and dark stripe after another. So that's the natural system. That's the way the climate usually works, this very sensitive little trigger on my remote. But you can think about us as also being a climate player. We're adding greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, courtesy of burning uh, fossil fuels. And it's like we're holding our finger on the remote, okay, flipping us into a brand new channel that we haven't seen for maybe 30 million years of Earth history. Um, and that's pretty remarkable because we're doing that just in the next century.